The key to quantitative research is that it is very systematic, meaning we move from a, a beginning point, then follow prescribed steps and come to an end point. In this case, the starting point of quantitative research is identifying the problem and then writing the research question. And our end point would be obtaining the answer to our problem. So let's go over all those middle steps between the beginning and the end point. First, remember that quantitative research is based on deductive reasoning. That is, quantitative research typically starts with a theory. That is, a researcher has some explanation for what is going on. Next, the researcher attempts to test whether or not this explanation is empirically supported. So in short, quantitative methods can be described as the following steps. 1. A problem is identified, and a research question is then formatted. 2. A hypothesis is then formulated. 3. The researcher must then perform a thorough literature review. This needs to be pretty exhaustive, meaning it can take months and months to filter through all of the published evidence to see what is already known and not known about a topic. Remember frameworks? Step 4. Well, here we are. The researcher picks a framework to use so that their findings of the research has broader significance since it is supported with a foundation of that framework. Step five, here comes the fun part, picking a design. Woot woot. The researcher needs to determine exactly how the answers to the research questions will be obtained. This step takes a lot of time. If it is not well thought out, the backbone of the study is weak and will crack. Step six, sampling. We're going to discuss this in an upcoming module in detail, but for now, remember that sampling includes a selection of a portion of the larger population for which it can represent. 7. Then the researcher needs to figure out which type of instruments will be used to collect data. For example, if we are measuring the effect of a new blood pressure medicine, our instruments could include a blood pressure cuff, maybe some lab work, and he or she needs to determine exactly which labs. Uh, maybe a pulse oximeter, perhaps, and so on. Step eight. Then the researcher has to obtain approval for human subject research through what's called an IRB. We'll talk about more of that when we work uh, during our ethics module. Step nine. Then the super fun part, collecting data. After all this hard work of establishing our foundation and design, the data can now be collected. Step 10. The researcher then uses the statistical tests that are available to measure the dependent variable to see what that outcome is. 11. At that point, the researcher looks at the data analyses and has to do further interpretation. What do the results mean? Are they significant? If not, why? And even if not statistically significant, may they still have applicability to clinical practice? This part brings in some subjectivity. Step 12, then the researcher shares the result. Unfortunately, some studies never get to this step. Well, what a shame. There can be many reasons for this, including inconclusive results, burnout, a discovery of flaws in the data collection, etc. But sharing the research, also called dissemination, is a huge part of any research project. It really needs to be shared with others so that we can learn from studies that are being conducted. And then the very last step, if the researcher was funded, the results have to be sent to the grantors. Wow, a lot of steps, but research can be so fun.